Countless champions have been crowned throughout the history of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! But what about the underdogs, the dark horses, the decks that upon first glance make you question everything you thought you knew about the game? In this series, both MBT and myself will be showcasing some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s wackiest unsung heroes. Each episode will feature new decks, new strategies, and the results will be unpredictable. You've seen the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but this is the history of Jank. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. I don't know what it is about History of Jank and Relinquished, but for some reason, I can't manage a single match win with one of my favorite monsters of all time on this series. Maybe this will be the one that finally breaks the streak. Now, if you're looking at this list and noticing a couple of similarities to a particular History of Yu-Gi-Oh! deck, you're on the right track. This is, in essence, a rethink of Ghost Trick Spirits, a deck that was piloted by the one the only Doug Zeef alongside Lucas Peterson and Jeff Jones around this time. It makes use of the very powerful Ghost Trick monsters to slow the game down to a crawl and drown your opponent in card advantage, while using Aratama and Nikitama, two spirits with chaos typing that play very well with each other, to make an endless cavalcade of rank fours and put monsters in the graveyard for powerful bosses like Blackluster Soldier. The core interaction that this deck is known for is functionally searching Blackluster Soldier Envoy at the beginning at a time when it was game-endingly strong, by placing it on top of the deck with Laval Chain and then drawing it using the effects of your monsters. We are attempting to use the spirits for something just a little bit different. As you may have noticed last episode, in which we tried to make Divine Grace... A lot of individuals were tinkering with this card in particular, Jin Releaser of Rituals. He'd of course eventually be broken in Necroz, but in the interim, players were looking for any ritual monster that could be considered playable with which to jam the big boy. Relinquished was on the shortlist, and it's not hard to see why. This card doesn't have any protection, and it doesn't win the game on its own, but it's removal, meaning if you invest a ton of cards into it, you're able to immediately convert those cards into advantage by taking powerful monsters from your opponent. Relinquished also is a dark attribute, which means that it plays very well by tributing the light attribute attribute Manju of the 10,000 Hands, and fits snugly alongside a Chaos Archetype like the Spirit Engine that had been discussed earlier. The rest of this list is pretty straightforward, we're playing some level 4 extenders in Kage Takage, we're of course playing both Senju and Manju, which are both light, pairing well with the Dark Type Eratama and Jin Releaser Rituals, BLS is a mainstay in decks like this, and Tour Guide from the Underworld here can summon Jin Releaser because it's a fiend. We've got 3 Relinquished, 3 Black Illusion Ritual, a Dark Hole, a Book of Moon, 3 Preparation of Rites of Foolish, and then 1 a piece of Bottomless Solemn Warning Torrential Tribute before rounding it out with three Fiendish Chain. We want our opponent's monsters not to be removed from the field, but to remain on the field negated so we can take them with Relinquished and hit for big damage. In the side, we've got other Jins. Curse Enchanter of Rituals is not particularly playable, but theoretically, if you were up against a Synchro Archetype, it could potentially be powerful. Jin Desirear was played pretty consistently in Relinquished builds specifically, aiming to shore up Relinquished's lack of protection by preventing it from being affected by the effects of trap cards. Of course, Lava Golem makes an appearance, as does Mystical Space Typhoon and Maxi in the extra. We've got a couple of Zen mains, uh, some Jins, Utopia, My Stroke, Shockmaster, Popley Operative, Emerald, Gaga -ga Cowboy, Abyss Dweller, Corn, Laval Chain, Diamond Dire Wolf, and Star Leash Paladynamo because we're playing more lights than other rank four strategies. So with that, I'll throw you over to Alex. Fucking North Wemka. What did I expect to happen in the last episode? I, I don't know if I had any modicum of hope that I was going to win that, but here we are. I feel pretty good because like this deck was teetering on rogue around this time in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. And if you've never seen this deck before, this deck is fucking crazy. I'm pretty sure we featured battery men in history of jank before, but I don't think you've seen it like this. This is probably like like full power battery man at the point where it's the most playable just because of the landscape of the rest of Yu-Gi-Oh at the time it was slowed down to the point where a lot of decks could compete but it was still rather rapid in the fact that decks could OTK out of nowhere and this was one of the rogue contenders of the time artifact battery man now arguably you don't even need the artifacts in this deck but at the same time they add a lot to the deck so let's go ahead and do the card by card so first up we have triple moral attack and a scythe the benefit these offer is that they are light so they synergize there to access cards like concealer pleiades for example, if you were to overlay with something like a battery charger, but also moral tax removal, scythe stops people from going to the extra deck. You're looking at this deck and you know if you know battery men that this deck can OTK, you're looking at this more like a control deck. You want to think that you're trying to slow the game down to a 
point where you can assemble your combo pieces. And once you have your opportunity to combo off, that is how you just win the game and immediately OTK. That's what you're trying to do with this deck. And hopefully I get to show that off in today's episode. Then we have the Battery Man. So the newest inclusion is Battery Man 9 Volt. And holy shit balls, is this card insane. So if you've never seen this card before, when it's summoned, you can add a Battery Man monster from your deck to your hand. And if you do, this card's attack and defense become double its original attack and defense. And you can only use this effect once per turn during your end phase, destroy this card. So one of the reasons this card is good is because after Micro Cell has been flipped face up, you never really had a good target before to summon off of this effect. Now you could flip Micro Cell, summon 9 Volt, finish resolving Micro Cell's effect because usually this is going to be getting killed in battle. So you draw a card. Then if that's the case, you get to trigger 9 Volt's effect since it was summoned to special summon a Battery Man monster from your deck. And it can just continuously, or excuse me, you add it to your hand. You don't special summon. That'd be even more ridiculous. You add it to your hand. Point being, it turns Microcell into this crazy advantage engine. And if in the instance Microcell doesn't get killed in battle, let's say it's your main phase and you flip Microcell yourself, you can do that, summon 9 volt, add charger, tribute Microcell for charger. And basically from here, you have like an OTK because then you can just get fuel cell and then you just, you're off to the races at that point. So 9 volt just does it all for this deck. This was a common, by the way, too. So a lot of budget players love this. We have triple charger, which just summons a battery man from deck. I was getting confused with this earlier. Two fuel cell, you just need these especially summon when you're going for the OTK, but also has a nice bounce effect. Double Industrial Strength, the Battery Man BLS. Triple Microcell, because if this card flips, it basically wins the game. And one Honest, because we're playing a light deck, so why not? The spells are a little bit iffy. We've got Triple Charger, which is just a monster reborn for a Battery Man. What's nice is that Battery Man triggers on summon periods, so this is a good reason to play this card. You have Battery Man Charger in here as well, but the problem is this only triggers on normal summon, so it's not as strong. I think you could maybe cut down on this card, but honestly, because you have 9 volt, I see why they want to max out. Double summon's also a weird one. This allows you to just combo off a little bit easier, but it just is a weird little bricky card that I don't know if you need to include. Triple MST and triple Stormforth are fine. Stormforth is insane because if you Stormforth your opponent's monster for charger and then you can just get like a nine volt or something, it, it just gets out of hand very quickly. We have then the trap cards, triple sanctum to get to our artifacts, a bottomless double breakthrough skill, call the haunted, compulse, solemn warning, torrential, and double wiretap. Again, we're trying to just control the field a bit till we have our tools to OTK, just win the game in one fell swoop. The extra deck is not really necessary for this deck, but there are some things that could come up. We have a Dweller, an Adrius, a Durandal, a Cairngorgon, Castell, Pleiades, an M7, Emerald, Diamond Dyer, an Exiton, a copy of Gaia Dragon, 101, Volcasaurus, Steel Swarm Roach, and Tyrus. And then for the side deck, we have a Lancia that we could bring in here if we absolutely needed against any of the Banishing decks. Double Fire and Ice Hand, because why not? They're insane. Triple Maxi as well. A Mind Control, Triple Exceeds Encore. Around this time, this card was actually kind of good, which is why it's in here. And Triple Vanity's Emptiness for if we know we're going first, we can just try to set up a board, flip emptiness, and we just probably win the game as a consequence of that, because emptiness is one of the stupidest cards ever printed. So, that is Artifact Battery Man, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope we get to show off how absurd this deck truly is for a pile of commons and rares, except for like the artifacts. But that, aside from that, this deck is extremely budget-friendly, which is why it actually saw a decent showing at locals and regionals, but let's not make you guys wait any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. Well, Joseph, I'm so happy that you decided to uh, give me a break. And after playing fucking North Wemco last episode, you're letting me play a good deck. And uh, this deck, even though this is jank, this is one of those instances where like this deck is actually quite strong. Uh, I'm really happy because I think we're both playing like off meta picks for this format, uh, as opposed to last format when we were playing, I think two of the best decks ever made. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't even know how you could say that with a straight face. They were both miserable, and uh, anyone who watched that episode would know about it. But I'm excited to see how this one's going to go. Uh, you're playing the better Ritual deck by far. Uh, just just imagine, Joseph, if you were playing this deck in the last episode, I could have just North wemco would you out of the game because you could never summon Relinquished. Ooh. <laughs> I was like, my, my deck's playing Book of Moon, buddy. I think uh, there is oh, actually I, uh, a problem. See, my deck literally loses to anything that's just targeting non-destruction removal, and it takes six cards to get me there. So <laughs> shout out the patron. We're not going to be doing that this time. Mr. Lon, thank you for the support. I rolled a five for odds. So I don't know what you had your hand up or even if you haven't had it up at all. Well, I didn't have it up, but I'm going to be honest with you. I would have picked one. Okay, cool. So I get to go first. I've been in the jank tank for like two months at this point. I was in it from 2022 into 2023. I need some miracle to get out of it. So best of luck, buddy. Hopefully yeah, you, you playing relinquish is wow. going to be what it takes. Jeez. This hand looks pretty solid. <laughs> Mine I'm too. Not gonna lie. Uh, this Main is, I don't one. like this. Yeah. 
I'm going to go set one, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war, buddy. Go ahead. Ooh, okay. So unfortunately, I do have the gin lock here, but I don't know if it's actually very good because that's probably like a triple A. Could be a micro cell. Is it worth it to sh... Mm. I'm going to go Manju. I'll break through skill. That is a big risk. Um, that's fine. Um, I'll go to combat. What's the punish here? I don't think there really is one. If it's microcell, you flip it up anyway. It's got to be microcell. There's nothing I can do about that, though. Yeah, um, let's hit it. You're correct. It is microcell. Oh, We're man. going for it. This card is so crazy. It's even better when 9 volts out, buddy. Yep. So we're going to summon 9 volt. Uh, we need to finish resolving microcell, so we will draw a card. Uh, and then we get to 9 volts, which we get to add any battery man from our deck to our hand. That yep. is wild. Got a few options. 9 volt can search himself, can't he? That's insane. That is absolutely wild that they can do that. I think I just go for that, if I'm being honest. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, we'll go main two, and I'll just pass here. Okay, so end phase per 9 volts effect. It will get destroyed. Okay, are you ready for me to blow your mind? It is okay. during your end phase. My end phase? Yeah, oh, this card's you crazy. shouldn't have, <laughs> This buddy. card's Thank unreal. You so much. It is unbelievable. I'll draw. Holy crap. This might just be the end of the game. All right, we're going to normal summon another 9 volt. Yep. Actually, are we going to even normal summon another 9 volt? Do I even have to? What is this? Da -da 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 -da. Do I still have the double attack on yep, the original? you do. Oh my god, this is just like the craziest thing ever. God, the world is truly my oyster. How can I fucking lose? Uh, let me think actually. Yeah, no, this is way better. Uh, I'm gonna sack the 9 volt for charger. Yep. Charger effect. Let's get the 9 volt. And we'll go 9 volt effect. Uh, 9 also volt, we're fine. going to grab industrial strength. Yep. Uh, special fuel cell? Special uh, fuel cell? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Special industrial strength? And that is the end of the game, yeah. <laughs> oh my, oh my good god. Okay, uh, let's go to game two. That's how two. I felt last time. Well, that one was close. Um, I'm gonna that's try last go game. second here. I think that maybe getting the battle phase is good or like you commit and then I can like make a relinquish. It's a little bit better for you that I am going first, but not by much. Yeah. Uh, I am just going to go by setting. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hid the wrong thing. I fucking hate artifacts. Okay. <laughs> I promise you this is this could be literally anything. Don't worry yep. about it. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to set four cards face down and throw oh it to you. Oh, my God. Come on. <laughs> All right. Stand by me. You made me go first, buddy. Uh, normal tour guide. Just heavy storm me. Uh, tour guide's fine. Go grab the djinn, the releaser of the ritual. Sure. Uh, combat. This is what, 22? Uh, yeah, I'll take it. Whatever. Second main. Wah. Who are we going for? Zen mains. That's pretty good. I'm not exciting. And then, baby, let's go. I just love Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> so very much. Fun and interactive. I'll draw. That card is maybe the worst card in my deck. Go ahead. Wah. Uh, let us think. This doesn't seem good. It's only 15. Yeah, sure, I'll take it. You want to add a fifth one to the back row, buddy? Thinking about it. I think I'm good, actually. I'll draw. Oh, excellent. That would have been useful many turns ago. Uh, go. I love Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Don't you? Wow. <sighs> this is the little Zen mains that could, I'll tell you that. I gotta, like, stop taking damage. Uh, I'll Sanctum. Um, sure. Uh, who we grabbing? Who we grabbing? Oh, that's good to know that this is in this deck, because I could have completely stopped you from going to Zen mains in the first place. <laughs> uh, we will go <laughs> Moral Tech. Yes. I don't even know if I activate this in all honesty. I could force you to just attack me. It's only face ups. Yeah, I'm not even going to use it. Uh, I'll attack here. Sure. Take your six. Uh, we'll book here. Book. I will protect every um, single card that is under my I monster. Guess I guess you will. Uh, second main, back to you. We'll draw. Oh, that would have been useful several turns ago. This is going well. This is, uh, this is going quite well. I will pass. I mean, maybe. I'll normal gin releaser. I'll try torrentialing. Yeah! Uh, combat. Sure. All right. Uh, we'll go end phase. Oh, boy. I... You want to <laughs> use that effect, buddy? How you feeling? I don't... I think that... I think that this one is... 
is not the moral tech. I think you're being epic. Which is the new one you set? The new one I set is the one closest to my deck. Uh, I'm going to go for this one. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, it's wiretap. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> I'll draw. Uh, it's something. Go ahead. I got to not die. All right, now I have to figure something out. Okay, let's try this. Manju. Uh, sure. We'll grab Black Illusion Ritual. Here we go. Uh, Prep. Get the relinquished. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this. I think I have to solemn this. No! <laughs> okay. Battle. Uh, wah. It is microcell. And I will solemn this. And we're dead. Hooray! Weird, weird, and bad game. Not good. This is going well. This is going well. All right, buddy, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I didn't know Scythe was in this. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I could have like Moral Tack popped and then like still denied you it anyway. It just didn't even feel that good to do that. So I was like, whatever. <laughs> so I, I, I could have probably not lost that game or at least tried a little bit better. You know, but in we'll your see. defense, who would have known that I would have attacked nine times with it and won? Yeah, uh, when my hand is all cards that are unplayable, who would have thought? Uh, good luck, buddy. Set five. <laughs> <laughs> Stand by me. That better not be fucking Microsoft. I know that it is. It's not even worth mentioning. Uh, we're going to normal Manju and activate the effect. This worked well last time, so I'll try it again. All right. We're going to Kage to Kage. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Hold on. Yeah, I'm going to think here. Yeah. I don't even know what the fuck else your deck can produce. It's like got some dumbass rank fours you can make. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, Okay. Let's um overlay these two for Laval Chain. Lava all chain so you can send Jin potentially and then just black illusion for relinquish. That seems kind of annoying. Uh, we'll sank them. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, moral attack pop the chain. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you. Looking good. Looking good. Stand by anything. No. Main one, flip the micro yeah. cell. <laughs> fine? Yeah. Uh, nine volt effect. Yeah. Let's get charger. Mm -hmm. Uh, we will sack for charger. Yes. Charger effect. Yes. Uh, nine volt is a once per turn. It is. So we can't go for him again. Who the fuck else can we get? It's any battery man except charger. Uh, sick. Let's go for fuel cell. All right. We will torrential here. Uh, wiretap. No! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> anything else? Nope. <laughs> Uh, so what, this isn't an OTK if you have Book of Moon, so kind of annoying. I guess I can bait it out with this fuel cell. Let's Claire. Mm, why are you doing this? I will book the charger. Uh, sure. Damn, why did I do that? I could have just won. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, 21, 21. Take 42. Second main, got another one. And... Uh, this guy just sticks around, doesn't he? Who? Fuel cell? This fuel cell? Yes. <laughs> yeah, all right, go ahead. Stand by me. He manned you. Uh, that's fine. Okay, all right. Uh, we'll get Black Illusion Ritual. Okay. Uh, Black Illusion Ritual. Your favorite card in you. No! Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god. I could have just summoned this other fuel cell and just like attacked oh, with shit. everything. Yeah. With the new book. <laughs> Yeah, like I was thinking if it's not book, if it's something else, it's better to just get rid of it first and then just drop the other fuel cell. I guess the punish cell. would be so like mirror force, but <laughs> pretty unlikely. Right, so, but I could have also just summoned the fuel cell first and then did the play with the fuel cell to bounce so I could at least have gotten the fuel cell on the field. I don't know if there's a rank six that this deck even plays that would have burned. No, there's nothing. Strike that bouncer that, maybe, so. I don't know. Um, yeah. yeah, no, Whatever. Um, I, I hate to say this because, you know, I, I hate to give the... Uh, you know my feelings about this archetype, but um, this version of the deck uh, contains all of the same stuff that uh, the last time we played this Relinquished deck did, the Aratama, the Nikitama, um, yep. but it just gets run over so easily without the Ghost Tricks. The Ghost Tricks really <laughs> added a lot to this strategy in terms of slowing the deck down long enough that you could actually go for powerful plays like, you know, Laval Chain, Stack, Blackluster Soldier, CL2, Nikitama, Draw It. Um, 
as of now, anything that's even remotely aggressive uh, really punishes it very badly. And as we saw in the North Manco deck, uh, we're not at a time when Jin locking an opponent is an automatic win condition. Uh, your deck is crazy aggro. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this deck is just ridiculous. A single micro cell just ends up getting you to everywhere you need. Let's be honest, though. This is because we have 9 volts. Without 9 yeah. volt, this deck would not nearly be at the power level that it is. This card just brings the entire archetype together. And even like later, like solar comes out. Like solar's neat too, but 9 volt takes this deck to a complete another level. I mean, mm -hmm. it lets you search for any battery man that you're missing. So if you're missing like one of your crucial pieces, then you can ensure basically you have everything you need to get to the OTK. Charger already did that, but it requires a tribute. But mm -hmm. now you just have something that you can immediately get off of Microcell, because I believe Microcell is restricted to just level four or lower. And that is this the perfect, like, just segue piece to get into everything else. If you don't attack Microcell, that results in being able to tribute the Microcell for the Charger, which is, like, obviously what they were going for with this. And then that way you essentially get the whole OTK just from there. And uh, it's going to be 8,000 damage as long as you can get to the two fuel cells. Uh, this deck wasn't playing three Three. I know some decks did, but you didn't really have to. It was just yeah. kind of rookie at that point. No, I, However, I remember we did see in the second too. game where I drew double charger and battery, uh, what is it, recycling batteries, or battery charger, excuse me, the, uh, the monster reborn. We were, uh, we were bricking a little bit in the second game, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, um, this deck is, I, it looks super aggro in these games, but at its core, it's a control deck. You're playing like yeah. 20 traps and then a bunch of artifacts. Um, you kind of have to conceptualize all the battery men that aren't 9-volt and microcell as garnets, right? Like, yep. microcell yep. and 9-volt are just normal summons for you to develop, and then they go into 9-volt, uh, search 9-volt, 9-volt into charger, into industrial strength, and um, uh, fuel cells, and you just want to draw, like, maybe one of those. Uh, honestly, it looks really strong. I think even we could go down on some number of them, like battery charger, for instance, uh, probably is not absolutely necessary. I will say one I card agree. that's in here, and very good, that we didn't get to see, uh, was uh, the Monarch Stormforth. Um, yes. This was, like, the first deck that really made use of the Monarch Stormforth. I guess maybe if you consider UA playable. I remember, I have fond memories of firing Stormforth to su summon Charger, and, uh, it's really shocking uh, just how unprepared decks were to deal with it, especially if you can back it up with, like, wiretap Vanity's Emptiness. Uh, yeah. really, <laughs> really strong, shocking. and smacks of just sort of a modern style of deck in the same way that, uh, uh, BA, uh, Shadal, and Necroz would be very shortly, you know, OTKs out of nowhere, plays a very competent, capable control style, drowns your opponent in advantage, and watching it line up against, like, one of 2014's strongest soldiers in this, like, Aratama rank 4 strategy that develops a, a Laval chain to win in two and a half turns, it's just night and day. I think another thing that we don't really get to highlight that often in this series is, like, the price point of decks, like, we try to at times, right. Right. If you exclude the artifacts specifically, because just they were the only like meta relevant cards that this deck actually plays, everything else in here is actually quite cheap by yeah. comparison. I mean, especially the battery men cards themselves, they're all just like commons and rares for the most part. So yep. this was like a nice budget deck for anyone who's playing during this time, because even if you couldn't afford the artifacts, you could just play more traps and just lean more into the control side of the deck. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, deck sick, uh, a soft spot in my heart for, uh, for battery men. Shouts out to the person who brought it to uh, 2016 nationals and took a is this a uh, relinquished last run, Joseph? <laughs> uh, I do not think we see relinquished again after this. Uh, thank God. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout out the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout out to Shadow1317, Tim00x3, Moto, MBT Play Medulce, Cameron Smith, Pony Stark, Par 2, The Sinker Guide, Dan Man Hoban, Phoenix the Immortal, Dixon Yamada, Draconic, Jordan Coons, Iron Bladesman, Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, Valen Jackson, Little Fade Leaf, Dylan Hunter, Cody Brett's Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Hornet, Indian Taisho, Thanks for the Sleeves, Dad, Max, Matthew Brady, Twinkle Muncher, Dalton, Lou Bon Yodabon. I've tried reading cards before. It was horrible. Horrible, and my guinea pigs had to get me therapy. Helios 515, Simos Chaos Cooking Draft, Cheeks McLapperty, Stolfin Amethyst, Nim Noodle, Mallow Branch of the Burning Tunnels, Wonder Waffle, MBT Cancel Bio Community Soon, Cancel Bio Committee Soon, Cancel Bio Players Soon, Sakura San, Shrugzix, The Crystal Beast Enthusiast, ITF, Corvain, and True Dragon Gaming. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time.